This is one of a series of tutorials related to the Poplog system and its editor, VED. This particular tutorial explains how you can use function keys available on a standard PC keyboard or in some cases on a thin client X terminal or other machine. Um, the actual function keys available may vary from one machine to another and usually they can be programmed to perform the sorts of functions that will be demonstrated here but for now I will assume you have a standard PC keyboard. This file can be found online in the Poplog directory uh, listed here and it's called vidx term keys it's also part of the Poplog um, system uh, within the documentation help directory. There are two additional files, one of which is a JPEG file and the other is a PDF file uh, showing the diagrams and I will use the PDF file during this tutorial. A previous tutorial was based on the essential keys uh, teach file which showed what you can do with the editor if you don't have function keys working or if you're using a primitive keyboard without the standard function keys. Um, that functionality is provided much more conveniently if you do have the function keys. I'm now going to bring in a PDF file which shows what you can do with the function keys and I will um, start with just the top row of function keys which are usually labeled F1 up to F12. These can be used either on their own and what they do is shown on this line where it says just key. So if you press the key F1 that will mark the start of a range. If you press the key F2 that will mark the end of a range. And I'll show in a minute what that means. When you have marked a range there are various things you can do with that range like copying it or compiling it or formatting it or um, uh, deleting it. Now if you instead of just using the function key for instance F1 which says where the marked range should start if you precede it with the escape key that, so that has here esc plus key meaning press escape and then the function key then you get different effects so for instance if you have escape F1 that means that you should mark the file from at, at the top of the file as the beginning of the range and if you press escape and F2 that means mark the end of the file as the end of the range so that will mean that if you press escape F1 escape F2 then the whole file will be marked you might want to do that because you want to delete the whole contents of the file or you might want to copy it somewhere or you might want to compile it or format it or do something else that you can do with the marked range. The next group of function keys, three of them, are concerned with deleting a whole or part of a line. So F4, which is used a lot, will delete the whole line that the VED cursor is on F3 will delete a part of a line, F, namely the, to the left of the cursor. F5 will delete a part of the line, namely to the right of the cursor. And F6 and F7 will delete a word at a time. F6, the word to the left. F7, a word to the right. Uh, you can also precede these delete keys with the escape keys. And in the case of F4, if you precede it with escape, then it will just reinsert the last whole line that was deleted. If you precede one of the other delete function keys with escape, so escape F3, F5, F6 or F7, it will just reinsert the last part of a line that was deleted. These functions can be reprogrammed um, because the editor is all written in POP11 and the function key commands that are obeyed are all defined in POP11. So if you want to do something different you can, but these are the defaults. 
Now I'm going to move this out of the way and demonstrate some of those things. I'll go to a file called teach poem which just has some junk in it from the ancient mariner. So if I, I can use the arrow keys to move the editor cursor up and down as I'm doing now and uh, I can press the F1 key that means that the line that where the cursor is now becomes the first line of the marked range. If I go down a few lines and press F2 that means that becomes the end of the marked range. If I go further down and press F2 again that will extend the marked range. If I go up and press F1, that means the range will now start from where that cursor is. If I go down to that point and press F2, that means that's where the range will end if I press F2 now. So F1 and F2 are very useful for um, marking the beginning or end of a range. If you don't have the function keys, then as the previous tutorial showed, you can use escape lowercase m to mark the beginning and escape uppercase m to mark the end. But it's simpler just to be able to press a function key F1 or F2. Um, I said that uh, F4 would delete the whole of a line so I'm now going to press F4 with the cursor on this line that where you can see it moving and that is gone. If I go to another place and press Escape F4, Escape F4, it brings it back, but in that new location. If I do it again, Escape F4, it brings another copy. So I now have several copies of that file, um, which has a typo on it, which I've just noticed. It should have said it is an ancient mariner rather than an ancient marine, but never mind. So. Um, F4 deletes the whole of the line and Escape F4 brings it back. If I put the cursor in the middle of a line I can type F3 and that will delete the, the left hand portion of the line to the left of where the cursor is and my cursor is there moving so if I press F3 it deleted everything to the left of the cursor and shifted the rest of the line to the beginning. If I type Escape F3 it brings it back. If I type escape F3 again, it brings it back again. So, rather pointless in that case, but that just shows that just as you can reinsert the whole of a line that's been deleted, you can also reinsert a part of a line. F3 then deletes line to the left, F4 deletes the whole line, and if I do F5, it'll delete the bit of the line to the right of this cursor. So I'll press F5, and the stuff to the right is gone. F6 and F7 delete a word at a time. So I'm going to put this thing next to the word AND and if I press F6 it'll delete the AND in the following space. If I press F6 it then deletes BEARD. If I press it again it deletes GREY. If I press ESCAPE and one of F3, F5, F6, F7 it just reinserts sorry I pressed the wrong key ESCAPE, F6 will reinsert the last thing deleted, the last part line. If I do escape F6 again, it reinserts that word again. So F6 deletes the word to the left, as I now do three times. It treated that back quote as one word, so it was the fourth time and the long goes. On the other hand, F7 deletes the word to the right, so glittering should go. Glittering, now I now the comma, and then if I press it again it goes to the next line, and if I press it again it deletes the next word, spurious. So, whereas you can delete lots of characters by holding down the delete key and letting it auto-repeat, you may delete more than you want by holding it down a bit too long. Whereas if you use a word at a time with F6 or F7, it, you can do more accurate deletions. So let's get our function key map back. There are other things that you can do with the function keys to do with moving a marked range or copying a marked range. 
So I'll just demonstrate those two now. Um, if you use escape with F8 or F9, then it'll move a marked range from it, the last file you were in, or it'll copy the marked range in. You can also move something out to the other file using escape F10. But for now, I'll mark a bit of text, say line 13 and 12. Let's say line 13. I've marked that and it's in the wrong place. It's before line 12 instead of being after it. So if I want to move it, I move the cursor down to line 12 and then I can choose the function key which was uh, move range, F8, and it'll move the text to after the line where the cursor is. So let me just now do F8 and so it moved the text from before line 12 to after it and now I have lines 12 and 13 in the right order. So if I use F1 I now mark line 12 and line 13 and I have them in the right order. So if I go down to line 9 and I use F8 again I can move them down so I have line 12, 13, 14 in the right order. If I wanted to make a copy of those three lines I can go somewhere else, say down near the bottom of the file. If I want to copy I can use the F9 key which does copy range. So I'll use the F9 key and now I have a copy here of line 12, 13, 14 which are the lines that were marked over there. So that shows that you can either move or copy a marked range within a file. If I start another file, so I'll say fed silly dot p, I can use escape and F9 to copy in the text that I had previously marked. So if I use escape X to go back here and I mark lines 9, 12, 13, 14 and then escape X to go back to the new file city.p I can use the escape key and F9 and that copies into the city.p file the four lines that were marked in this file. If I go lower down and use escape and F8 they've now gone from the old file and have reappeared in the new file. So that's move in. Escape F8 is move in. Escape F9 is copy in. Uh, likewise I can move out so if I want to put this back I can mark lines 9, 12, 13, 14 I can go into this other file, choose a location say after this period line 4 I can come back to this file and use escape F10 to move this text out so I'll type escape F10 and it's gone from the file above and it's now gone down here. Um, if you have marked range and you want to get rid of the mark you can use F12 to to um, clear the mark. If uh, for some reason your display has got corrupted you can use F10 as a refresh uh, command to refresh the display. Um, the F10 key in some conditions will not work. Uh, it depends on what your window manager is doing. But for instance, mot if you're using Motif, then the window manager will prevent the F10 key from working. Now, F11 does two commands which are labeled pop and push. And these have to do with recording locations. So supposing I want to, I'm now going to move this out of the way, I want to remember where I was at some point. So I've put the cursor on line 9. 
I can press F11, which is marked push, which means it'll push a location onto a stack of locations. I could also have used an escape P command for that, but for now I'll just use it with a function key. I can then go and do something else, something else, and then if I want to go back to where I recorded that location, I can use F11, which was to pop the location. So if I use F11, uh, sorry, that should have been escape F11, and because I forgot to escape it, I will just use escape F11 and then escape F11 again, and now it's gone back to that position. So what happened was that I stacked the position twice by pressing F11 twice, which caused two pushes, and um, then to get back I had to do two pops. Let me just do that again. I'll choose, I'll use F11 to record that position. I'll come here and do some things. I will then go there and use F11 to record that position. And I'll come down here and do things. And then if I do escape F11, it goes back to the last position recorded, which was there. If I do escape F11 again, it goes back to the previous position. So programs can use that to do things in a file and remember where they were and go back to where they were before, which is quite useful. And a human doing various things in a file can also remember location and go back to it. So that explains um, most of the things that you can do with the top row of function keys except exchange position. So if you have been in a location and then you uh, go somewhere, so for instance I'm now going to push this location by using F11, that's on line 9, I'll come down here to near the end of that window and I will type hi. If I then do escape, if I then do F12, which is here, it will exchange the last two positions. So it will exchange the position where the cursor is with the last position pushed. Um, let me just do that again. I press F12, sorry, I press F11 to store that position, come down here, press F12, and ah, it doesn't work because I've redefined F12 and I'd forgotten that. Um, so uh, if I do escape P, it will um, record, it'll swap a position. Uh, but for now, I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, I'd forgotten that I'd reprogrammed the keys for my own purposes. Escape S, uh, for me, will now swap between two positions, that the current position and the last position pushed. Uh, you can also use F12 instead of that. Now, a keyboard, a normal PC keyboard, will also have some keys marked in the middle, marked Insert, Home, and Page Up, and then below that, keys marked Delete, End, and Page Down. It may have some other keys as well. And again, those keys can be used on their own, as explained in here, and they can be used preceded by the Escape key. So if you press Insert on its own, it'll move the editor in and out of static mode. If it's in static mode, then you can't break lines, and uh, if you type over text, I'll show you what happens. So normally, if I type, for instance, a few Ks here, it will just insert the Ks and push everything to the right. If I press the insert key which toggles static, I'm going to press it now, it says at the top static on, and if I press some M's, they overwrite the characters that were there to the right, instead of pushing them further right. If I press 
the insert key again, the toggle static key again, it now says static off. So if I now type some L's, they push the text to the right again. And if you go into static mode, which I will now do, and press the delete key, you just get blank spaces. Where if you go out of static mode, static's now off, and you press the delete or backspace key, then as you delete, things to the right of the cursor are moved left. Um, the normal delete key uh, can be used to delete the character to the left of the cursor, but sometimes it's mapped onto the deleting the character under the cursor. Um, that may depend on how you set up the editor. The keys marked home and end should just take you to the top of the file, so I'm now going to press the home key and takes my cursor to the top of this file, and if I press the end key, it takes the cursor down there to the end of the file. If you use the page up and page down keys, that shows you a page at a time of the file. So I'm now going to move this out of the way and get a, a bigger teach file in. Let's try teach Eliza. Then I can use the page down key to get the next window full. The page down key gets the next window full. If I use escape W to make this file take up the whole window instead of only half of it, then each time I press page down or page up, it'll uh, do a bigger jump. So I press page down and it goes to another part of the file showing a larger new portion. If I press page up and go back, back, you can see the page numbers going down 34, 1. Right, so um, that shows what you can do with these keys. Last window, next window, or the same as page up and page down. You can precede these keys with the escape key. If I use escape line above, escape insert rather, that will insert a line above the current line. So for instance, if I put my cursor next to the bed here, and I type escape, and then the insert key, it inserts a blank line above that, which I could have done by moving the cursor around and hitting the return key, but this is just easier. If I want another blank line, I type escape, insert again. Um, escape and home and escape and end are quite useful for moving to where the beginning and end of a marked range are. So if I've got a marked range that starts from there down to here, then if I do escape home, the cursor goes to the beginning of the line. If I do escape end, the cursor goes to the end of the range. So that's what escape plus home does and escape dot end does. If I've got more than one file, for instance, I might be using a teach file and I want to see the next page of the teach file without leaving the current file that I'm editing, um, I can use escape page up and escape page down to make the other file change. So let me go back to my um, teach poem file and down here I have the teach Eliza file so if I'm reading Teach Eliza and I'm doing some experiments here, you know, I might define Eliza or something, and then I want to read on to see uh, what the uh, Teach Eliza file says after that. I press Escape and Page Down, and I get another page of this file. Escape, Page Down, I get another page of this file. Escape, Page Up, goes back up this file. And if I do it a few more times, it takes me all the way back to the top of that file. So it's quite convenient if you've got one file that you're working in and another file with documentation to scroll the file with documentation 
without leaving the file you're working in. The keyboard will also have arrow keys, often in this configuration, left, right, and then up and down between them. And they do the normal things in VED, namely the left key moves the, ca the cursor one character at a time left, and if it's at the beginning of the line it goes to the end of the previous line. And otherwise you can use the up arrow to go up, or the down arrow to go down, or the right arrow to go right. But if you precede them by escape, so escape plus up does up lots, escape plus left does left lots, and so on. What does lots mean? Well, let me just demonstrate that by moving this out of the way. And let's go to the um, teaching Liza file where there's a more text down here, I say. So if I put the cursor there and I do escape right, it jumps a third of the way across the screen. Escape right, jumps a third of the way. Escape left, jumps a third back. Escape down, escape down, does goes a third, a third of this window size down. Escape down, escape down. So that way you can make a window scroll partly without it going to the whole new window. Escape up, goes up, up, and then up again. So that's what happens when you precede the arrow keys with escape. The numeric keypad, which is on the right of the standard PC key, has um, a few keys at the top, starting with numlock, which are not, which is not used, and then something with a backslash, which you may program but doesn't have a standard use in VED. Then there's an asterisk key, which can be used to compile a line of text. So, for example, if in here I have a command in pop11 which is square root of 99 then I can um, use this key here which is the uh, third key along at the top of the numeric numeric keypad which on my keypad has an asterisk to do load line so this is a line with a cursor I press the load line key and that compiles that line and the result is printed out over there in fact it's often just as easy to type escape D which I've done in previous tutorials and each time I do escape D it redoes that line The key to the right of that, which has a minus sign, will always redo the last command that was on the status line. So, for example, if I go into this file and the last command was teach Eliza and I press the redo key, then that takes me back into the teach Eliza file. And if teach Eliza is gone and I press redo, um, it brings back the teach Eliza file and there might have been some other command there and it would just redo that so there's also a switch status key which takes the editor cursor between the file and the command line if I press switch status then you'll see the editor cursor has gone up there if I press switch status again the editor cursor has gone down there. If the cursor was in this position, switch status takes it up there and switch status takes it back. So that's quite useful if you want to go back to a previous command and then edit it slightly um, and then press return in order to um, obey that command. Or if you start typing a command and then you realize you want to do something else, you can switch status and status do something else and then come back later. The enter key at the bottom is the far right of the keyboard and that's the thing that normally takes the editor into the uh, onto the status line and clears it. So if I press the enter key it clears the status line and I can give a command. The other 
keys partly duplicate and partly extend what you can do with the up, down, left, right arrows. So for example, there's a left and a right, and there's up and down. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, there are also diagonal keys. So this key goes up left, that one goes up right, that one goes down left, that one goes down right. Those are the keys numbered 7, 9, 1 and 3. Let me demonstrate that. I'll use the switch status key to get down out of this. I'll use escape W to make the teach Eliza file take the whole window and then I'll use escape 3 which should go down right lots that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so the 3 should be down right lots and watch what happens escape 3 goes down to here and if I do escape 3 again it goes down further if I do escape 1 it'll go down to the left Escape 1 will go down to the left and so on. If I do Escape 8, it will go up lots and up lots. And similarly, Escape 6 will go right lots. So, if you don't use Escape and you just use the uh, diagonal keys, then it moves diagonally one character at a time. So if I use the 7 key, that's diagonally up to the left. If I use the 1 key, that's diagonally down to the left. The 9 key is diagonally up to the right. And the 3 key is diagonally down to the right. So they add to what you can do with the left, right, up, down arrow keys on the keypad, which duplicate what the central arrow keys do. So the central arrow keys do this. And with escape, do bigger moves. And these up, down, left, right keys just do the same as that. With escape, the left, right, up, down, lots also do bigger moves. But the diagonal keys are extra here, and they're quite useful. Well, um, I've said that this key over here, which is on the top row of the numeric keypad and usually has an asterisk, um, compiles a line at a time. Um, if you precede it with escape, it will compile a whole marked range. So for instance, if I um, type repeat fi five times and mark that and then say um, print out ten end repeat, then I can press this key to make it compile that range. So if I press that key, uh, what did I do wrong? For some reason, I think that um, I, I made a mistake. But if I do Control D, it certainly repeat. It certainly compiles those files, and um, okay, there's definitely a, a mistake that I've made somewhere here. So uh, never mind that. You can compile a range by typing Control D, which is probably as easy as anything. So that illustrates, um, apart from my occasional errors, the things that you can do with the function keys. And um, in my case, I've sometimes remapped them, and therefore that's screwed up some of my demonstrations of the standard functions. But uh, all the main standard functions are preserved and worked in my demonstration. The important thing is that each of these mappings from a function key to a VED operation is programmable. 
and uh, there are other files, other tutorial and help files that explain how you can define your own commands or redo, remap the standard commands or the standard key functions. Uh, but that's not a topic for now, so I will now end this tutorial.